everyone. I wanted to share with you this cheat sheet that I created to help me understand pressure and density altitude when I was going through ground school. It also is a great visual reference as I took maybe three or four different books that I was reading and sort of combined a lot of the information that it provided about altitude, pressure, air density, and helped me to really kind of visually understand it. So to start off, we have absolute and true altitude, so types of altitude in this area. Absolute, I think about as if I'm flying in my plane and I drop a ruler all the way down to the ground, that's my absolute or AGL. If I was doing the same thing, but over sea level, dropping that ruler down to the sea level, that would be my true altitude. Then of course we have indicated altitude. Indicated altitude is going to be based on obviously your altimeter. Your altimeter is using pressure to determine what altitude it's, it's displaying. Now in a perfect world with the pressure across the earth would be standard, indicated altitude and true altitude would always remain the same because your indicated altitude or what was showing in your altimeter would be perfect, would be accurate, but it's not. So we do need to understand the relationship of how pressure affects our altimeter so that we understand that if it changes as we're in flight, we know how to understand how it could be showing us an error. And in which case we need to know that because if it's showing us something other than our true altitude, it could affect if we're going to be running into somebody. Pressure altitude and density altitude, what I came to understand, has really only, only to do with airplane performance. If I'm at 5,000 feet and I'm at an airport and I'm taking off, my plane is gonna have a much harder time taking off and need, going to need a longer runway than if I'm at sea level with the same plane. So altitude affects how our plane feels and how it can perform. We need our pressure altitude and our density altitude to, to actually calculate our landing and takeoff distances. Without that, then we really aren't taking into effect how the plane feels at those different altitudes. So basically over here, you've got um, kind of a step-by-step -step of how to calculate your density altitude and how that works. You're gonna start off with your airport elevation. You're gonna then look at your altimeter and look at the Coleman's window to see your setting. Now, if it's set at 2992 and you're at sea level, that would be standard. But we've got ours set at two, or it's not set up, but it's indicating 29.60. This is a standard density altitude chart that I literally pulled out of the ground training book. So it should be something that you're familiar with. I wanted to sort of highlight how you use the chart so it's obviously an easy reference. I'm gonna start off with 2992, which is standard pressure. You're gonna go up to 29.6 as in this example, and it's gonna give you 298. So 298, and it's a positive number, so we have to add that number to our airport elevation. That gives us pressure altitude. Because as you see over here, pressure altitude is standard or it's, it's regular altitude corrected for non-standard pressure. So this is saying the pressure isn't standard, we need to add 298 in order to get our pressure altitude. So we've got out our elevation plus the correction equals 4,000. So if we're just taking in consideration pressure, a difference in pressure that is, our airport is actually gonna perform like it's at 4,000 MSL and not 3,700 MSL. Another kind of easy way to calculate um, just pressure altitude is this. So you've got 2992 standard. We're gonna take 29.82. That's a difference of 0.1. A thousand feet, times a thousand equals 100. So basically the reason why I put this is because you can think of it as every time this number goes down by 0.1, you're actually adding 100 feet in terms of your pressure altitude. So that's the relationship. That's how it's going to affect it. As this number goes down, the pressure goes down, you're going to be adding, you're gonna be increasing your density, or excuse me, your pressure altitude. If this number was higher, so if it was 30.02, a difference of 0.1 again, but it's gonna be a negative number, and that means we're going to subtract that. You always keep 
the new number down below so that it gives you either a positive number, so you add, or a negative number, which we would subtract from your airport elevation. So I hope that gives you kind of an understanding of that relationship. And you know, the last number can kind of sometimes be like just taken off because 100 feet is going to make it might make a difference, but 50 feet or 25 feet is probably not. So that 100, that the number, how it changes right after the decimal point is really the most important factor. Okay, so now that we have our pressure altitude, now we're going to come down to this chart, which is really talking about how does temperature affect our our performance. So in this scenario, we've got a temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to go up to our new pressure altitude of 4,000 feet, kind of comes across, and then you go straight across over to the six, and it's in thousands, so this is 6,000. So our density altitude is 6,000. So this hopefully is a somewhat simple way of figuring out or understanding how to get to density altitude. Then what I wanted to do is sort of describe for myself the relationship between temperature, humidity, altitude and pressure and how does that affect airplane performance. And one of the first things I had to learn was about air density and why that mattered. So I kind of think about it in this, in this way. Air density has to do with like how many molecules are in the air. And I might not be saying this the most uh, technically or, or scientifically, but basically how it works is that, you know, we know that when we're flying in cold weather, our plane actually performs a lot better. And that's because cold weather has a lot more air molecules. So it's like your, your propeller needs something to push off against. If there's not enough air density, it doesn't have as much ability to push off those air molecules or use those air molecules to push off. So it's kind of like if you're in water, like and if you're taking your arm and pushing back in water, you can actually use that as momentum to go forward. But if you're just doing that in air, which is a lot less resistant, then it can't actually propel you forward as much. So I think about it the same way. You need that air molecule and then that density of air molecules to push against your propeller does in order to propel you forward. So with that in mind, here is the relationship of um, the different kind of atmospheric um, conditions. Temperature, as temperature increases, air density decreases. So that should obviously or automatically tell you that your airplane performance is going to go down because less density, less dense air is going to not allow your plane to perform as well. Your density altitude obviously goes up because we're saying that the higher density altitude, so if you're at 5,000 feet taking off, it's harder for your plane to take off. So that's always going to be opposite of airplane performance. Humidity is the same thing. Altitude is both the same thing. As those increase, your air density decreases. And then obviously your density altitude increases and your airplane performance decreases. Those all have the same relationship. The one that is opposite is your pressure. As pressure goes down, air density goes down. So if you have a lot of dense air, you're gonna have more pressure. A lot less dense air, it's gonna have less pressure. And we saw that up here as well too. As this number decreased, we added air, or we added um, to our pressure altitude and, and in turn to our density altitude. So that's basically showing you the relationship, um, all of which affect air density effects, lift power and thrust. So now down here, I just kind of gave more of a numerical sort of description. So you've got your elevation of 5,000, you have standard pressure, and then you have 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Over here, I'm gonna jump over to here for a second. I found this chart online that I thought was really helpful. This has got your physical altitude, temperature, and then within here is density altitude. So it's a quick, quick reference if you don't wanna to have to do a lot of calculations. So say if you're at 5,000 feet, here's 5,000 feet, standard air temperature is actually 40. That's why I highlighted all the sort of the middle section here is because this is all standard. So really the standard temperature is going to change depending on what altitude you're at. So standard for 5,000 is actually 40. So that's why down here I've got 5,000 standard pressure, standard temperature at that, at that altitude equals a density altitude of 5,000. And you can do that on the chart as well here. You can see the same exact thing. If you go to 40 degrees, you go up to 5,000, go over to 5,000, it's roughly 
and you're at standard temperature, it's going to give you a same density altitude. So that's standard atmosphere. Now, if you increase your elevation, what ends up happening, if you plug in the same numbers, your density altitude does increase. Altitude increases, density altitude increases. Same as what we described up here. Then the only factor in this one is I, I kept everything else standard, except for this time I changed the pressure. And again, density altitude went down because it's the one thing that has the inverse relationship. And then in this example, I keep everything standard, but I increase the temperature. And again, temperature increase, density altitude decrease. So basically I use this as a check to make sure that this actually did make sense. And I plugged it into these numbers and said, okay, all right, it actually does work. Now over here, um, the last kind of little bit of information, this is a great chart because it shows um, your altitude, it shows standard pressure and temperature um, at different altitudes. So as you increase in altitude, your temperature goes down, but your pressure also goes down. And this was the one thing that confused the heck out of me because as your temperature goes down, we know that the um, the air density actually increases. It's actually a good thing. We want to to be flying in colder weather. So I felt like, gosh, how, why is that, you know, it's not better to be flying at a higher temperature or higher altitude. But we also have our pressure goes down. So there's a lot less air molecules out there. So there's actually two things that are happening kind of counteracting one another as we are um, flying up in higher altitude. So it the rate at which it decreases is this for temperature. It's 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit and two degrees Celsius for every thousand feet up to about 3,600 feet MSL. So that sort of gives you just a sort of quick reference there. Um, barometric pressure. As altitude increases, pressure decreases, which means air density decreases. Kind of the same thing as what I was describing here, but it's just giving you a different part of the equation. For every thousand feet, it equals one inch less of pressure. So that's basically talking about, I know that we learned that in ground school as well too, but I just wanted to put those two references there as well too. And the last but not least has to do with what we talked about earlier about how the indicated altitude could be different than the true altitude depending on pressure and it actually also changes based on temperature as well too. So we've got the whole, you know, rhyme temperature or pressure change from high to low, higher creates a higher indicated altitude. So it's gonna show up as a higher indicated altitude than what is really, um, what's really true. So we need to look out below us because we actually, you know, that's where we need to be looking. Temperature and pressure change from low to high, it's gonna indicate a lower indicated altitude than where we really are. So we need to clear the sky. So that basically hopefully describes um, a little bit more about pressure and density altitude and all the factors and components that affect it. I hope that helps.